listening to the Orange and Blue Sports Network, the official home for student play-by-play -play at the University of Florida College of Journalism and Communications. Now let's take you live courtside at the Stephen C. Listening to the Orange and Blue Sports Network, the official home for student play-by-play -play at the University of Florida College of Journalism and Communications. Now let's take you live courtside at the Stephen C. O'Connell Center. It's Florida Gators women's basketball on the Orange and Blue Sports Network. Welcome on into the Orange and Blue Sports Network, your official home for student-run radio play-by-play -play broadcasts and podcast coverage of the Florida Gators. We are live from the Stephen C. O'Connell Center. I'm Nate Bilgeray here alongside my color guy, Alexis Vivanco. We got a, a very special young man, Joseph Torviso, producing the broadcast for us all today. Thank you, gentlemen, for being here today. The Orange and Blue Sports Network brings to you some Florida Gators women's basketball, except this time there's a twist, and that twist comes with stakes, the stakes being the postseason. The Florida Gators, although they are not in the NCAA tournament, they received an invitation to the inaugural Women's Basketball Invitational Tournament, which is kicking off this year. Florida accepted, and here tonight, the Florida Gators host the St. John's Red Storm in the first round of the WBIT. Stakes uh, are high and desire to win is even higher. Let's talk about the history of this matchup. These two teams have only ever played three times in the matchup's entirety. Florida has one win, St. John's has two. It's been about a decade since these two teams have played each other, Alexis. Uh, in the 2014-2015 season, uh, Florida actually went to Queens in New York and uh, took a loss to St. John's, so a little bit of a get-back game here for the orange and blue. Alexis, you got anything in particular on the away team tonight uh, on the ho that uh, are, are on the home team that will play key into this matchup? Well, first off, first and foremost, let's begin with this. That first thing that we mentioned about them only winning, well, there's only been three matchups all time yeah. between St. John and Florida. Correct. Florida may have gone one and two, but the samples are just aren't there. Absolutely. However, with that being said, I like what you did there. I like what we're going to bring yourselves in. With that being said, Florida while a little bit underwhelming, has all the tools necessary they mm. need to succeed tonight. Mm. St. John's currently 17 and 14, and they've gone mm. 11, excuse me, 11 and 7 in the Big East. Mm. Compare that to the SEC a caliber program, which has teams like Alabama, mm -hmm. Vanderbilt, Missouri, got player, or team, excuse, teams, excuse me, that are actively mm -hmm. competing for an NCAA tournament, which actually leads, the SEC actually leads the amount of teams the amount of programs, I should say, within the NCAA tournament mm. tied with the Big 12. When you start to begin, when you start to see things like that, it kind of makes sense why Florida's ranked so much higher than St. John's in this inaugural WBIT tournament. I understand that. Now, remember, St. John's does have two wins over Marquette. Marquette is a tournament team uh, this season. St. John's plays the likes of UConn. So really no slack of competition on the other end. But yes, uh, the SEC is bigger and better. For now, we're going to present to you uh, the starting lineups for today's match. St. John's will be provided to you first at the one, number one, Unique Drake. Unique Drake is a senior, and she is actually a unanimous selection to this year's uh, Big East All-First Team. Congratulations, Unique. At the shooting guard position, uh, Jyla Donald, a sophomore at the three spot. Bernaya Mayo, a junior, number 23 at the four. Jillian Archer, number 14, a forward and a senior. And rounding things out at the five is Phoenix Gideon, number 21, a forward and a junior. Now, we present to you the starting lineup for your Florida Gators. As always, spearheading the offense, Aliyah Matharu, uh, the point guard, the senior, the elite offensive weapon for this Florida Gators team at shooting guard. Zippy brought in number four, she is a senior. At the three position is Layla. Reynolds, number 13, she is a freshman. At the four will be Jariah Warren, a junior, and rounding things out at the center position is the uh, towering Faith Dute, number 25. She is also a senior. Those are your starting lineups for tonight. Now back to the actual matchup. Florida only went 5-11 in SEC play uh, this season, Alexis. So 
really an underwhelming season for this team. Like you said, when you consider the talent on this team offensively, the duo of Leilani Correa and Aliyah Matharu is really elite. I like to compare them uh, to Walter Clayton and Zion yeah. Pullen. Uh, so Aliyah Matharu is the consistency aspect of this offense. Every single night, she's going to give you 18. She's going to give you 20. She's like, she's your ZP. But when Leilani Correa gets going, uh, when a guy like Walter gets going from beyond the arc, those two are unstoppable. They are electric and they are dynamic. So if you can get Leilani and Aliyah going tonight, this Florida Gators offense is in for a long night of scoring, Alexis. Well, I think you're exactly right there, Nate. There's a reason that Leilani Correa won sixth woman of the year. Come, she comes and she brings the energy. That's mm -hmm. what Florida needs, especially with a team that has great scores here and there. Leilani Correa is the jump start, I think, to this team. And when you match that up against St. John's, who far and away their best player so far is Unique Drake, number mm -hmm. one. She's a 5'7 redshirt senior from Columbia, South Carolina. She's averaging 17.7 points per game. When you put it in perspective compared to the rest of her team, she is the heart and soul of this team. That's there's, true. A, there's a reason that she is redeemed, she is, excuse me, as esteemed as she is mm -hmm. within her respective conference of the Big East. She's a person that is gonna get the ball going and get it get active early and often. Agreed. Now you can't forget Jillian Archer, she was awarded all Big East honorable mention, uh, averaging under 12 points a game at around 11 and a half, almost eight rebounds a game to go along with that, and one and a half blocks per game. So uh, Archer is a threat offensively and defensively. But when it comes to the Gators, this Gators team ended the regular season out uh, somewhat poor, uh, to put it cut and dry. They went out on three back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back losses to Georgia, to Bama, and then to Auburn. Then all of a sudden, SEC tournament play comes around and we see a completely revitalized team. The Gators went out there, uh, they were able to beat uh, teams of the, of the likes of Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt had a very successful season. Vandy was the sixth in the SEC tournament. Florida was the 11th. Florida was not supposed to win that basketball game, yet win that basketball game they did. So we've seen the fight from these Gators. The question is, uh, can they put it all together? Now one thing uh, interesting about this Florida team, they actually averaged the most points off the bench in the country. So uh, this team is dynamic when Leilani Correa and Aliyah Matharu are scoring, but you get those bench players involved and it's a completely different team. We got a uh, tip off coming to you right here in the O-Dome. Jillian Archer and Faith Dute. Dute wins it and gives it to Warren. Broughton bringing this ball up the court, moving left to right for the Gators. She gives to Matharu, who's got it on the near side wing, has not put down a dribble yet. She finds Kindred at the top of the key. Kindred back to Broughton, looking for that Faith, Faith Dute screen, tries to peel around the near, near side elbow, nothing going. Kicks it down low to Dute, she's got it in the post. She's double teamed, a whistle is blown, it's gonna be a three second violation on Faith Dute, an unnecessary turnover, St. John's is gonna take over, moving right to left. That's exactly where you don't wanna start this game out. You wanna come out scoring consistently early and often, and those fouls are just not gonna get you anywhere. Mayo bringing the ball up the court. She finds Donald, who's got it on the far side wing. Right back to Mayo, who's dribbling this ball at the top of the key on that Gators logo. She's double teamed by Warren and Matharu. Kicks it in the elbow post, right back to Mayo. Mayo uses that archer screen. Mayo gives it top of the key. Now it's in the corner. Pull up for three, Drake. No good off the back of the iron. Falls into the hands of an awaiting Zippy Broughton, who brings this one up the court, moving left to right. She finds Matharu, dribbles to the free throw line. Pulls up, 15 foot J, no good off the back end of the iron. Rebounded by St. John's, it's Mayo. Bringing this one up the court, moving right to left for the Johnny. She throws this one down low. She was looking for for Brown, but Brown was not there. Zippy Broughton bringing the ball up the court now for the Gators, moving left to right. Zippy's got this one, near side wing. Kindred, drive to the rim, pull up jumper. Rolls around the rim, falls. She gets her own offensive rebound, puts it back up. Excuse me, that was Layla Reynolds, my apologies. Missed the shot, got the offensive rebound, put it in the basket, 4-2. Florida leads 2-0 with 8.30 to go here in quarter number one. Mayo's got the ball. At the top of the key, just in front of that half-court marker, Aliyah Matharu tightly contesting on defense. Mayo dribbling with the left. Mayo gives this one to Drake. Drake got this ball far side. Baseline drive, pull up, 15-foot J, nothing but net. She got it. Unique Drake is unique in the way she scores, and she showed it uh, just there. Aliyah Matharu bringing the ball up the court, moving left to right. She dribbles, pure, peels around the near side elbow, kicks this one out to Dude from the far side baseline, 15-foot J. Yes, she did. Nothing but net. 4-2, Florida leads. Eight minutes to go here in quarter number one. Mayo bringing this ball up the court. She's going to try to go coast to coast. Nothing going. She dishes this one to Gedeon, who puts it up 
inside the paint, off the glass, and in. We're tied at four now with 7.45 to go in quarter number one. Broughton bringing this one up the court. She finds Doot at the top of the point. Doot drives, and it's going to be a charge on Faith Doot. That was a, a solid job of Phoenix Gideon to stand her ground, take the charge. It's going to be a turnover on Faith Doot, St. John's basketball. And right off the bat, you can already see St. John's is playing with an intensity that matches or maybe even surpasses the Gators right now. As you can see, Gideon with an amazing acting job, if you want to say that, to get Faith Dew to get the, uh, to get Faith Dew to, uh, to pull the charge. St. John's bringing the ball up the court. Donald's got this one on the far side wing, standing on that WBIT logo. Gives to Mayo. St. John's running a little give and go. And now... It's Donald at the top of the key. She's working on Matharu, dribbles with the left, crosses back over, gives it to the wing. It's Archer at the wing. Jillian Archer looking for the give and go. Mayo's got it in the far side corner. Back down to Jillian Archer in the short corner. She kicks this one out near side. Wing for three. No good. Jalea Donald could not find the basket, but the board goes to Archer of St. John's. So it's a reset possession here for the Red Storm. Mayo's got this one. At that Gator logo, just beyond half court. Dribbles it up to the far side wing. It's Warren on defense. Mayo, down low to Archer in the post. Working on Rimdahl, puts it up off the glass. Finger roll is good. 6-4, St. John's leads with 6.40 to go here in quarter number one. Gators pushing the break. Matharu brings it all the way up left to right. Then she gets it poked out of her hands by Mayo. It rolls out of bounds at the baseline. It's going to be Florida Gators basketball on the far side baseline with an inbound play. And Mayo doing a great job staying, staying aware defensively, managing to poke that ball out of Matharu's hands, making sure she never even had a chance. Matharu inbounds to the safety. It's Layla Reynolds, drives right side, peels around that right elbow, goes to the rim with the right off the glass, and in 6-6. Six, six. We're at Hyde here with six and a half to go in quarter number one. And Reynolds doing a great, great job taking on the contact, making sure that she finishes through all that and manages to get the score. Drake's got this ball. Just beyond that half-court marker, she uses the archer screen, peels around the right elbow, puts up the 15-foot J, nothing but net, 8-6. St. John's leads with 6-10 to go here in quarter number one. Matharu bringing this ball up the court, she gives to Reynolds, Dute's got it at the top of the key. Dute with the pump fake, using that pivot foot, nothing going. Looks for the bounce pass, down low to Correa. And it's gonna be a travel on Leilani Correa instantaneously as she received that pass in the paint, took an extra step. It's gonna be another careless turnover on the Gators. 8-6 St. John's leads with six minutes to go here. And Dude making a critical mistake against Leilani Correa. That travel may have been called on Correa, but do not be mistaken. Dude threw that one into double coverage, made it very hard for her to make a play. Mayo's got this ball, Aliyah Matharu tightly contesting on defense. St. John's moving right to left. Mayo gives it to Drake, who's got it on the near side wing. A beautiful pass in the paint from Drake to Archer. She floated that thing in there. Archer snagged it like Odell and put it up off the glass and in uh, from the right block. It's 10-6 now. St. John's leads with five and a half to go. Florida basketball moving left to right. Reynolds has this one at the free throw line, drives left, puts up the 15-foot J off the back end of the iron, and in. 10-8, 5.24 to go in quarter number one. St. John's has got the ball. Donald's bringing this one up the court. She gives to Mayo. St. John's is moving right to left. Matharu picks up Mayo at the half court. Mayo's got this ball still at the top of the key. She gives to Donald. Donald's got it on that near side wing. Unique Drake in the corner. Kicks it down low to Archer on the left side from the left block with the left hand and she got the bucket. 12-8, five minutes to go here in quarter number one. St. John's leads. Faith Dutes sets a screen for Zippy Broughton. Zippy Broughton finds Aliyah Matharu. Far side wing, nothing but net. That's a triple. 12-10, 4-48 to go here in quarter number one. 12-11, excuse me. St. John's has got the ball. Moving right to left. It's Drake at the top of the key. She finds Donald, who gives it right back to Drake. Far side wing. Brought in on defense. Drake pulls up from the far side elbow. Yes, she did. That's a bucket. 14-11, 4.30 to go here in quarter number one. Matharu's got the ball in near side corner. 20. Foot J is no good. Bounces off the back end of the iron. Rebounded by St. John's. John's pushing the break. And they get the fast break layup. It's Mayo who drives on the left, and the Gators are pushing the pace right back. Layla Reynolds has the ball, tries to penetrate down low, uh, and she falls out of bounds, but falls at the hands of Jillian Archer. It's going to be a foul on St. John's. Florida Gators inbound from the low baseline. 
as we take our first media timeout. We'll step aside for the first break of the day. Make sure you stay tuned. It's 16-11. St. John's leads with four minutes to go. You're listening to Florida Women's Basketball on the Orange and Blue Sports Network. Hey, Russell Wilson here, and I know how important exercise is. It's essential. It's essential. With Play 60, United Way and the NFL are helping kids stay active and play at least 60 minutes a day. Healthy kids. Healthy kids. But what this place needs is you. To donate or volunteer, go to unitedway.org slash play60. Because great things happen when we live united. Donate. Donate. Are you guys going to do that every time? Yes, of course. Yes, of course. Brought to you by United Way and the Ad Council. There are some things you can only do once in a lifetime. Graduate high school, get your first job, and if you're a young man about to turn 18, there's one other thing, which is also the law. Registering with Selective Service. It's fast, it's easy, and you only have to do it once your entire life. Just visit your post office or sss.gov on your computer or smartphone. Do it and keep yourself eligible for a lot of other once-in-a-lifetime experiences, like that first college loan or Pell Grant, or U.S. citizenship if you're an immigrant. Hello, I'm John Lithgow. Manatees are unique, among the most amazing animals on Earth, but they're endangered. We pose the greatest threat to their survival. Many manatees are killed or injured by boats or other recreational activities. I'm a writer of children's books, including one about manatees, and I believe education is the key. You can be part of the solution. Please contact Save the Manatee Club right now. Call 1-800-432-JOIN. Thank you. Are you saving for a big purchase or just trying to put money away for a rainy day? The National Foundation for Credit Counseling offers these tips to help you meet your savings goals. Set aside money from every paycheck, bank any raises, bonuses, or tax refunds, and put away loose change every night. It adds up. For more tips on how to save money and reach your financial goals, call a certified NFCC counselor at 1-800-388-2227 or visit nfcc.org, a public service from the National Foundation for Credit Counseling. Welcome back to the Orange and Blue Sports Network, your official home for student-run radio, play-by-play -play broadcasts, and podcast coverage of the Florida Gators. If you weren't with us before, thank you for joining us now. It's 1611 St. John's leads here in the O-Dome with four minutes and seven seconds remaining in the first of four quarters in today's basketball game. Now, remember, the stakes are high today. It is the WBIT, so it's a winner-take-all type situation. You win or you go home. So for one of these teams... It will be the last game of the season. Now, we resume play with the Florida Gators inbound from the far side baseline. It'll be Zippy Broughton on the inbound. Broughton awaiting that basketball. She gets it, pounds it in her hands, looking for options. No one's open. Throws it out to Correa. And the whistle is blown. It looks like Broughton stepped over the line on the inbound pass, violating that inbound pass, turning the ball over unnecessarily. It's St. John's basketball moving right to left now. Owen bringing this ball up the court for St. John's. Alberte Rimdahl picks her up at half court. Owen's got this one just beyond the half court marker at that Florida Gators Gator half court logo. She gives it far side wing to Drake. Drake looking to use that archer screen. She peels around with her left hand. Nothing going. Brought in on defense. Drake still with the ball. Uses another screen. Pulls up at the top of the key. Drake still got this ball at the top of the key. Trying to drive left. Picks up her dribble. 15 foot floater from the near side elbow. And she got it. Some acrobatics, acrobatics on that shot. But she gets it done. 18-11. St. John's leads with three and a half to go here in quarter number one. Unique Drake showing off that scoring prowess that she has. Already has around eight points on the night, and it's clearly obvious why. Layla Reynolds pulls up from the free throw line. She got it. Nothing but net 18-13 with 3.17 to go here in the first quarter. St. John's leads. St. John's inbounds that ball. It's Owen bringing this ball up the court and moving right to left. She's pushing the pace, pounding that ball in her right hand. She gives it to Archer, who's got this one on the far side beyond the three-point arc. Uh, Archer looking to make a pass there to Owen, but it was a sloppy pass. Rimdahl's able to get a hand on it in the passing lane, pokes it out of bounds, but it's going to be St. John's inbound from that far side sideline. And St. John's has been so good already at converting that defense into some great offense. St. John's currently going seven for their last seven field goals right now. Down low, Archer in the post, and she is almost stuffed. 
by Layla Reynolds. Layla Reynolds got some ball, but she got some hand too. So it's going to be a foul on Reynolds and Archer. will head to the line for a chance at two here. 18-15, five-point lead for St. John's with 2.53 to go here in quarter number one. And Florida already putting themselves in some pretty negative categories, all things considered. Three fouls to St. John's one, which considering we're still in the first quarter right now, is not a sign of anything negative, so to speak, but not the greatest start for a team that. Archer puts it up, misses the first free throw. It bounces off the front end of the iron and out. Still 18-13, 2.53 to go in quarter number one. Archer pounds that ball three times with her right hands, goes for a fourth, a fifth, a sixth, and a seventh, finally rolls around that basketball, puts up the free throw, and drains it. With that type of buildup, you better drain it. And she did. 19, 13, 16, or six-point lead, excuse me, with just under three minutes to go here in quarter number one. The Florida Gators bringing the ball up the court, moving left to right. Zippy Broughton's got this one for the Gators. She crosses that half-court marker. Looking for Correa, nothing going. Broughton brings it over to the near side wing, tosses it down low to Faith Dude, who snags it with one hand, puts up the layup from the near side block, can't get it to go, it's rebounded by Mayo. St. John's is pushing the pace, moving right to left. St. John's still got the ball, it's Owen who's dribbling cross court at the top of the key, dribbles with the right hand, moves over to the far side wing, gives it to Donald. Now it's Drake with it at the top of the key, gives it to Archer, right back to Drake, drives right side. And she goes up for that righty layup, can't get it to go, but she draws the foul, so Drake will be heading to the line for a chance at two here. 19-13, 2-12 to go here in quarter number one. And St. John's already beginning to separate from the pack, so to speak. Six point difference with two and a half, two and 12 seconds, excuse me, left in this first quarter. And it's pretty obvious to see who are the playmakers here on this team, Nate. Drake drains that first free throw. It's 2013 now, 2.12 2 to go here in quarter number one. I agree that it is obvious and unique. Drake right here is most certainly one of them as she drains that second free throw. 21-13, St. John's is separating itself from the pack of Gators across from them as they take an eight-point lead. And unique Drake, a leader of women. I mean, March 7th, she was unanimously, I should add, selected to the All Big, All Big, All Big East first team such an incredible score. Absolutely. Ranks fourth in the league, averaging 17.7 .7 points per game in the Big East. Not a person you want to mess around with or give any open space to. Alberte Rimdahl's got this at the top of the key for the Gators. Finds Aliyah Mathara, who drives far side baseline, tries to give it to Reynolds. Can't find her. It's stolen by Mayo. Mayo throws it up the court, and the layup is good. J Jayla Donald gets the bucket to go. 23-13. St. John's leads by 10 for the first time in this game. Faith Duke got this ball, kicks it out to Reynolds, near side corner, nothing going. Leah Matharu now has it at the top of the key. Matharu dribbling the basketball with her left, Owen tightly contesting on defense. Matharu calls for the screen, doesn't get it. She swings it over to Reynolds, who's got it on that far side ring. Reynolds drives with the right, puts up the baby floater. The finger roll is good off the glass and in. 23-15, now an eight point lead for St. John's with just north of a minute to go here in quarter number one. And Reynolds has been the spark plug the Gators have needed all night. Already eight, already 10 points on the night, double digits. And that right hand has just been lethal. Mayo's got the ball at the top of the key, dribbling slowly but surely. Matharu tightly contesting on defense. Mayo picks up her dribble, got nowhere to go. She gives this one to Drake. Drake pulls up, far side wing for three, no good. Layla Reynolds is able to secure the rebound. She gives this one to Matharu, bringing the ball up the court, pushing the pace left to right. Matharu trying to go coast to coast. That she does, goes up for the layup on the far side. and. Gets it to go, but it's not going to count. As, as Donald uh, draws the charge there, it's going to be a turnover on the Gators. St. John's basketball, 23-15. St. John's leads with 50 seconds to go here. And unfortunately, a great play by Aliyah Mathar just wasted away by another unfortunate call. That's a second charging foul for the Gators on the night. First coming from Faith Dute earlier on. Just another case of missed opportunities here by the Gators in this first quarter. Mayo's got this ball. 
on the near side wing. She finds Drake at the top of the key. Drake goes through the leg, step back, fur three from the top of the point, rolls around the rim, no good. Gideon had the offensive rebound in her arms for a second, but it was snatched away from her by Reynolds, who finds Aliyah Matharu, bringing this ball up the court for Florida, moving left to right. Florida setting up an offensive set here. Matharu calmly dribbling and waiting uh, at the top of the key, far removed from the arc. Looking to use that Faith Dude screen, that she does. Matharu picked up immediately. Matharu finds Rimdahl, near side corner. Rimdahl, baseline drive, back out to Matharu, near side wing. She got it. The triple is nothing but net 23-18, and that is the buzzer on quarter number one. Ice cold, Aliyah Matharu gets it done as the buzzer expires. 23-18, St. John's leads after the first of four quarters has been completed. We will take a step aside here on the Orange and Blue Sports Network. When we come back, we have floor, we have more WBIT basketball for you all. You're listening to the Orange and Blue Sports Network. Welcome back to Science Today. And we already have our next caller. Welcome. Who's this? Hi, I'm Philip. Hello, Philip. You sound really young. <laughs> Not really. I'm nine. Oh, wow. You're still in elementary school, right? Does that matter? Oh, no. Not at all. What's your question? Well, I know the molecular formula for water is H2O. I also know that hydrocarbon is CH3, CH2, 50, CH3. Glucose is C6H12O6. The general formula for an alkene is CnH2n plus 2. But what I can't seem to find is any scientific formula for Bob. Bob? My goldfish. Are you ready for kids who eat healthy? Good nutrition can lead to great things. To find out how a healthy lifestyle can help your child succeed, Go to MyPyramid.gov. A public service announcement brought to you by the Ad Council and USDA. At the American Lung Association, we're fighting for a day when we can all breathe easier. We're fighting for clear skies over every city and healthy lungs throughout the country. We're fighting to free millions of Americans from the addictive grip of tobacco and the devastating effects of lung disease. The American Lung Association isn't just fighting for air, we're fighting for all the things that make it worth breathing, and we can use your help. See what you can do at fightingforair.org. From the vantage point, Mafatu saw six war canoes drawn up on the beach, but what held the boys' eyes in awful trance were the figures, the eaters of men, cannibals. Mafatu watched the strange scene, powerless to move. In that very instant, he heard a crashing in the undergrowth. Four figures were tearing through the jungle. He turned and ran blindly down the trail, thinking only of his canoe. If only he could reach it before the savages overtook him. Explore new worlds. Find out what happens next by reading the book Call It Courage by Armstrong Sperry. For other great book ideas, visit literacy.gov. A message from the Library of Congress and the Ad Council. Gaining weight was easy. Losing it's a lot harder. I have to work at it every day. But with every step, I lower my risk for type 2 diabetes and heart disease. And that makes it Morning, Daddy. very much worth the effort. Learn how you can help stop diabetes by losing weight, eating healthy, and staying active. Visit CheckupAmerica.org or call 1-800-DIABETES. A message from the American Diabetes Association. Welcome back into the Orange and Blue Sports Network, your official home for student-run radio play-by-play -play broadcasts and podcast coverage of the Florida Gators. I'm Nate Bilgeray here alongside Alexis Vivanco, Joseph Torviso, producing the broadcast for us tonight. Thank you, Joseph. If you weren't listening before, and you are now, St. John's has got a five-point lead on the Orange and Blue, 23-18 to 18 after one quarter of play. Now, as per usual, it's unique Drake. She's doing it all. Ten points next to a bunch of twos for the rest of that St. John's roster. Unique Drake is a unanimous Big East first team selection for a reason. She can score the basketball, and she does so incredibly, incredibly dynamically. Now, uh, when you look at the Gators, it's Layla Reynolds getting the ball in the bucket tonight. Ten points for her. Not usually the uh, marquee scorer on this team, but tonight she's getting it done, Alexis. Well, it's pretty obvious. I mean, she's been trusted all season. Only a freshman, but to put up double digits right now and be a leading scorer with girls like Aliyah Matharu and Leilani Correa speaks a lot about the quality of her play. 
St. John's has got the ball now. It's Donald. She kicks it out. Near side corner. Mayo's got it on the near side wing. Pump fake. Drives left. Puts up the 15-foot J off the front of the iron. No good. Rebound grabbed by Zippy Brunton. She throws this one up to Leilani Correa, who's got it on the near side wing. Gator still moving left to right. Leilani Correa finds Alberte Rimdahl on the give and go. She uses the dude screen. Gives it to Zippy Brunton. Drives. Throws up the lefty layup off the glass. No good. Rebound is secured by Owen, and she is now pushing the pace for the Red Storm. Moving right to left. Kicks this one to Gideon at the top of the key, who finds Mayo. Far side wing for three. She got it. That was just money. 26-18. St. John's leads with nine minutes to go here in quarter number two. Rimdahl has this one at the top of the key, dribbling. She finds Leilani Correa, who's working on Mayo in that isolation game. Leilani Correa tries to pull up from the elbow, got nothing going, kicks it out to Rimdahl on the far side wing. Drives baseline, kicks it to Dute, 15 foot J, far side, no good. Rebound secured by St. John's. Mayo's bringing the ball up the court, moving right to left for the Red Storm. Brought in tightly contesting Mayo. Mayo brings this one back to the near side wing, pounding that ball. With her right, looking to use the archer screen, she tries to do so unsuccessfully. It's Owen now, far side corner, just in front of that three-point arc for two, but no matter, it's no good. Bounces into the hands of a waiting Faith Duke. Sippy Broughton pushing the pace, pulls up, mid-range J, no good. Owen secures the rebound, 26-18, 8-18 to go here in quarter number two. Owen bringing this ball up the court for the Red Storm, moving right to left. Alberte Rimdahl tightly contesting on defense. Mayo has it now at the top of the key. Jariah Warren on defense. Mayo looking to use that archer screen. She does. She goes right. Peels around the wing. Up and under for layup. Wow, nasty layup there from Mayo. She put it up and under, and she got it to go. 28-18. St. John's leads by 10 now with eight minutes to go here in quarter number two. Leilani Correa dribbling the ball at, at the top of the key. She finds Alberte Rimdahl, who gives it to Duke. At the top of the key, Dute to Correa, far side wing. Correa picks up her dribble, skips through that lane, finds the basket, gets it to go off the glass. 28-20, 7.34 here, remaining in quarter number two. St. John's has got the ball. It's Owen dribbling slowly, just in front of that half-court marker. Archer has it in that far side corner. Back to Owen on the far side wing. Owen. Looking down low, she finds Archer, who goes up for the righty layup from the right block, puts it up off the glass, and in a nice feed there from Owen to make it 30-20 with just north of seven minutes to go here in quarter number two. Faith Dude's got this one at the top of the key, just in front of that three-point line. Alberte Rimdahl uses the Faith Dude screen, pulls up 15-foot J, rolls around the rim, no good. It's Owen now bringing up the ball for the St. John Red Storm, pushing the pace. Mayo. Pump fakes that three from the near side wing. Leilani Correa isn't sweating. It doesn't even put a hand up in the air. And she was absolutely right. Mayo dribbling that ball slowly but surely on the near side wing. She finds Donald, who's guarded by Rimdahl. Donald to Gideon. Gideon looks for Archer down low. A sloppy pass there from Gideon. But I believe it was Leilani Correa who got a hand on it. So it's going to stay on the far side of the court as St. John's basketball. It's been a battle of the bigs here so far between... Phoenix Gideon and Faith Dute right now, and Faith Dute is being outclassed at every step of the equation. Gideon right now heading back to the bench to take a quick breather, but it's obvious that these, this red storm is here and outclassing our Florida Gators. Drake with the ball, crosses over on Rimdahl, drives middle of the lane, she got it to go. A nice floater from that SEC mark just in front of the free throw line. It's 32-20, now St. John's leads by 12. Aliyah Matharu near side three, bounces off the front end of the iron, no good. Faith Dude with the offensive rebound, kicks it back out to Rimdahl, second chance is no good. Now we got a third chance as Aliyah Matharu grabs another offensive rebound, finds Reynolds who kicks it right back out to Matharu, dribbling that ball at the top of the key. Give and go to Rimdahl, Rimdahl working on Owen. Rimdahl finds Reynolds near side wing. Reynolds drives, tosses it up with the left for the finger roll, falls to the court as she does so, can hit the shot, still 32-20. St. John's, Mayo bringing this ball up the court, moving right to left, Aliyah Matharu on defense. Mayo brings that ball back just in front of that half court marker to slow the pace of play down in this uh, mile high uh, fast game. Mayo. Gives this one to Owen, who's got it at the top of the key. Rimdahl on defense. Owen goes straight to the rim on the right. Puts up the lay. No good. Off the backboard and out. But it's going to be a foul on Alberte Rimdahl. So Owen is going to find herself at the charity stripe with a chance to extend this lead to 14. 32-20 St. John's leads. 5.36 to go in quarter number two. Well, while St. John's might have the opportunity to extend their lead, Florida has not found any of that success. They've had a scoring drought for over the last two minutes, so to speak. 
5.36 in the second quarter, and Sky Owen, just a force on the floor, doing her thing, and it's pretty obvious. She might not be making as many points as you would, you would hope, but she's fast and she's efficient. Absolutely, and uh, efficiency comes at the line for her as well as she drains both of those free throws to make it 34-20. St. John's leads five and a half to go here. Liam Atharu looking to pull up at the top of the key. Pump fakes it, looking for DeZecco on the cross-court pass, and it's just intercepted instantaneously by Donald, and maybe a bit of a frustration foul there from Matharu, who fouls Donald uh, instantaneously after Donald picked off her passes. You were talking about earlier, Alexis. Florida is already in trouble in that foul department. No need for those frustration mental fouls after a mistake is made when you're already lacking in the foul category. I just think Florida right now is not sure of what they're seeing right now, because they're playing with a team that has not run a lot of offensive sets. It's been a lot of plug and play and go with the flow and that flow mm. is killing Florida right now. Absolutely, Owen dribbling that ball on the near side wing beyond the arc. Gives this one to Drake, goes through the legs on Rimdahl and finds Donald. Donald back to Drake. Drake through the legs, step back for three, near side wing off the back of the iron and falls into DeZecco's hands, who finds Zippy Broughton bringing this ball up the court left to right. Broughton to Reynolds, right back to DeZecco. DeZecco drives with the right, peels around the elbow, kicks it out to Rimdahl, near side corner, finds Reynolds, who finds Broughton, top of the key. She drives with the left, goes up for the lefty layup, and it's not going to count regardless. It's going to be a foul on the floor on Owen. It's going to stay this way with the Gators as an inbound pass from that far side baseline. St. John's leads 34-20 with 4.43 to go here in quarter number two as Florida takes a timeout. We're going to step aside for this break. You're listening to Florida Basketball on the Orange and Blue Sports Network. To school with your children, we say the Pledge of Allegiance together. I'm one out of every four children in America, and I'm struggling with hunger. I'm lucky to grow up where I could be whatever I want. I want to grow up and be someone who doesn't go to bed hungry. Please visit feedingamerica.org today and find your local food bank. Every dollar you donate helps provide seven meals for kids like me. Together, we're Feeding America. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. In the news, a small boy was rescued from abuse today by a magic trick. Witnesses say a bully had the boy pinned down. Scott was hitting Timmy pretty hard. And I said somebody should do something. Moments later, a street magician arrived on the scene. Police reports state he covered the bully with his coat. What happened next is still under investigation. The bully turned into a bunch of kittens. The victim left the scene unharmed. Boy, you never see that happen. That's because it doesn't. If you see abuse or neglect, learn what you can do from American Humane at BeHumane.org. I'm Sally, a volunteer at United Way. I'm asking people around the neighborhood what they think this place needs. Uh, excuse me, hi. What do you think this place needs? I'd like to see more parking. More playgrounds. Free movies. Ah, uh, that's easy, better restaurants. And you, uh, what do you think this place needs? This place? Oh, more ice cream trucks. Okay, <laughs> uh, how about you? Wi-Fi everywhere? I was thinking more money in the pockets of local families come tax time. Um, can I change my answer? I was just kidding about the ice cream. Oh, that's way better. Uh, now that you mention it. When it comes to getting better tax refunds into the hands of local families, what this place needs is you. To donate or volunteer, go to unitedway.org. Because great things happen when we live united. Brought to you by United Way and the Ad Council. Gaining weight was easy. Losing it's a lot harder. I have to work at it every day. But with every step, I lower my risk for type 2 diabetes and heart disease. And that makes it Morning, Daddy. very much worth the effort. Learn how you can help stop diabetes by losing weight, eating healthy, and staying active. Visit CheckupAmerica.org or call 1-800-DIABETES. A message from the American Diabetes Association. Welcome back into the Orange and Blue Sports Network, your official home for student-run radio play-by-play -play broadcasts and podcast coverage of the Florida Gators. I'm Nate Bilgeray here alongside Alexis Vivanco. 34 to 20, St. John's leads with 4.43 to go here in quarter number two. It's going to be Gators basketball as they've gotten inbound from the far side baseline. An issue with Florida's offense that I've seen so far, just a lack of diverse scoring. A lot of players with a 
no points. Layla Reynolds goes up for the layup from the near side block, gets it to go right off the inbound play. A nice bucket there, 34-22. St. John's leads now with four and a half to go in quarter number two. And Nate, you're exactly right about that diversified scoring. Layla Reynolds carrying the load so far for the Gators. Only Gator with double-digit points. Owens got this one at the top of the key, finds Drake. Pulls up, 15-foot J. She got it to go from the near side elbow. 36-22, 14-point lead with four minutes, 10 seconds to go in this game. The Gators push the pace. Reynolds takes it coast to coast, goes up for the layup from the right side and just gets absolutely stuffed by Gideon. It's St. John's basketball now, moving right to left. Owens got this ball on the near side wing. Dribbling that ball with her left, brought in tightly contesting on defense. Owens goes behind the back, use the Gideon screen. Finds Drake, who's got it on the far side. Kicks it down low to Archer. Archer goes up from the near side block. Layup off the glass and in, and she gets it. 38-22. Uh, St. John's leads with three and a half to go here in quarter number two. Near side three for Reynolds. Wide open, and she can't get it to go for the Gators off the front end of the iron. No good. St. John's pushing the pace. Unique Drake uh, takes the 15-foot J and gets it to go off the glass, 40-22. St. John's leads with 3.20 to go here. Reynolds has this one on the near side wing. She gives it to Tezeko at the top of the key. It's Donald on defense. Now it's brought in far side corner for three, nothing but air as she does not find the rim on that one, 40-22 with three minutes to go here in quarter number two. Owens dribbling that ball, waiting from the set for the set from head coach Joe Tartamella. She gets it and she goes, dribbles it to the right, finds Gideon, who's got it on that far side wing. Give and go to Unique Drake, who loses dribble for a second. Albert de Rimdahl on defense. Drake tosses it down low to Archer. Archer triple teamed in the paint. Doesn't matter, she gets the floater to go from that far side block. It's 42-22 with two and a half to go here. St. John's leads. Reynolds has it. Near side corner, gives it to Tezeko. Top of the key for three, wide open. Doesn't get it to go. But Jariah Warren snags the offensive rebound and puts up the second chance layup from the near side block. 42-24, 18-point lead for St. John's. 2.20 to go here in quarter number two. Owens got the ball, and she finds Drake, who's got it at that Gator half-court logo. Gives it to Archer on the near side elbow, who finds Donald at the top of the key. Donald dribbling with her left, swings it to Drake, who tosses it down low to Archer, and it's going to be Jariah Warren reaching over the right shoulder of Archer, trying to pick off the pass. She got a little bit of shoulder there. It's going to be a foul on the Gators. St. John's will maintain possession with an inbound play from the near side baseline. That was a lot of information there, Nate. <laughs> yeah, indeed, indeed it was. Well, this game is a lot, isn't it? It hasn't really stopped outside of inbound plays. It's just up and down the court, and I think that's where the Gators are struggling in that high pace. Unique Drake pulls up 15-foot J from the top of the key. Nothing but net, and it's a 20-point lead now for St. John's with a minute 52 to go here in quarter number two. The Gators have the ball moving left to right. Matharu working. At the top of the key, she finds Dude also at the top of the key, who swings it down low to Reynolds. Reynolds pump fakes once, goes up for the layup from inside the paint, and she gets it to go 44-26 with one and a half to go here in quarter number two. Mayo bringing this ball up, moving right to left for the Red Storm. Matharu on defense, picks her up at half court. Mayo drives with the left, kicks it back out. Drake for three from the top of the key, bounces off the left side of the iron, and Aliyah Matharu is able to secure that rebound. Matharu bringing the ball up the court, finds Reynolds, who gives it right back to Matharu on that near side wing. Matharu step back, 19 foot J from just in front of the three point arc is off the back side of the iron, and no good. It's St. John's basketball now. Mayo bringing this ball up the court, moving right to left. By all accounts, the Gators have not come to play tonight. Only person on the on the floor, excuse me, for the Gators with double digits points is a freshman, Layla Reynolds. Yeah, Kenza Salgas did check in for the Gators a minute ago. Let's see if she can make a difference. Mayo has the ball, working on Matharu. She drives, penetrates that paint, step back, 15 foot J from the free throw line. No good. Gators pushing the pace, moving left to right. Aliyah Matharu pull up for three, far side wing. She gets it to go, 44-29 with 30 seconds to go here in quarter number two. St. John's leads. Drake's bringing the ball up the court. 
for the Red Storm. She's got it just beyond the half-court Gator marker. It's Kenza Salgas on defense, and it looks like Drake is going to dribble out the clock here and wait for that one last shot. It's Mayo now with the ball. Aliyah Matharu picks her up far beyond the arc, gives it to Donald, who gives it to Drake on that near side wing. Donald driving, slicing and dicing to the rain, finds Mayo. But it looks like it's going to be a charging foul on Drake as she was driving before she got rid of that ball. So Florida is going to take over here with 2.1 seconds to go in this first half. St. John's leads 44 to 29. And Florida with the exact get back they needed. They needed a little play and St. John's plan on running out the Two clock. Two seconds to go. Matharu, half court shot. Oh my goodness. I thought it was good for a second, but uh, I was indeed wrong. That one falls out off the far side of the iron. St. John's closes out half number one with a 44 to 29 lead over the Florida Gators. Really just a lackluster performance from Florida offensively, defensively, and in transition. Not what you want to see from the orange and blue. When we come back, we have our esteemed Joseph Torviso giving us a little update on an around the SEC in basketball, and then we'll follow that up with some WBIT, WBIT updates. Joseph, we look forward to hearing from you. We'll see you on the turnaround of this break. You're listening to Florida Women's Basketball on the Orange and Blue Sports Network. Sound of someone correctly installing a car seat. And this is the sound of someone incorrectly installing a car seat. Correctly? Incorrectly. Hear the difference? No? That's because installing a car seat incorrectly is terribly easy. So much so, 75% of adults install them wrong. For simple instructions on how to get it right, visit buckleupforlife.org. Ah, perfectly executed. Brought to you by Cincinnati Children's Hospital Medical Center. My name is Ruth Rusi, and this is how I live United. I read to children as part of United Way's education program. It helps them create links between language and literacy and prepares them for a better academic future. I figure I have the time and they have the need. My name is Ruth Rusi. I help kids prepare to succeed in school. So I don't just wear the shirt, I live it. Give, advocate, volunteer, live united. Go to liveunited.org. Brought to you by United Way and the Ad Council. Hey, Russell Wilson here, and I know how important exercise is. It's essential. It's essential. With Play 60, United Way and the NFL are helping kids stay active and play at least 60 minutes a day. Healthy kids. Healthy kids. But what this place needs is you. To donate or volunteer, go to unitedway.org slash play60 because great things happen when we live united. Donate. Donate. Are you guys going to do that every time? Yes, of course. Brought to you by United Way and the Ad Council. Are you saving for a big purchase or just trying to put money away for a rainy day? The National Foundation for Credit Counseling offers these tips to help you meet your savings goals. Set aside money from every paycheck, bank any raises, bonuses, or tax refunds, and put away loose change every night. It adds up. For more tips on how to save money and reach your financial goals, call a certified NFCC counselor at 1-800-388-2227 or visit nfcc.org, a public service from the National Foundation for Credit Counseling. You're so annoying. You're so annoying. Stop copying stop me. Stop copying me. Mom, tell her to stop copying me. Mom, tell her to stop talking to me. Kids will spend 10 minutes copying everything their sibling says. You're such a You're doofus. You're such a doofus. How about two minutes to brush their teeth? Brushing for two minutes now can save your child from severe tooth pain later. For fun two-minute videos to watch while brushing, visit 2min2x.org. Two minutes, twice a day. They have the time. Mom! Mom! A message from the Partnership for Healthy Mouths, Healthy Lives, and the Ad Council. You are a healthy eater. Oranges for vitamin C, flaxseed, and mackerel for omega-3s. But did you know the same foods that are good for your body, i.e. not beef jerky, are also good for your eyes? Yep, research shows proper nutrition can impact the development of cataracts and age-related macular degeneration, two leading causes of blindness. So keep up the healthy munching, my well-fed friend. And for more easy ways to keep keeping your eyes healthy, see your optometrist or visit AOA.org. Welcome back to the Orange and Blue Sports Network. My name is Joseph Torviso, and I'm going to be giving you the scores around the SEC. The Florida Gators currently trail at halftime 44-29 to to St. John's. Arkansas currently trails away at Tulsa 15-3 early in the first quarter. Currently, Mississippi State 
are leading Georgia Tech nine to nothing at home in the middle of the first quarter. And number 11, Auburn, are trailing 10 to 20 at home against number 11, Arizona. When I come back, I'll be giving you around the scores around the WBIT. American Lung Association, we're fighting for a day when we can all breathe easier. We're fighting for clear skies over every city and healthy lungs throughout the country. We're fighting to free millions of Americans from the addictive grip of tobacco and the devastating effects of lung disease. The American Lung Association isn't just fighting for air, we're fighting for all the things that make it worth breathing, and we can use your help. See what you can do at fightingforair.org. Welcome back to Science Today. And we already have our next caller. Welcome. Who's this? Hi, I'm Philip. Hello, Philip. You sound really young. <laughs> Not really. I'm nine. Oh, wow. You're still in elementary school, right? Does that matter? Oh, no, not at all. What's your question? Well, I know the molecular formula for water is H2O. I also know that hydrocarbon is CH3, CH2, 50, CH3. Glucose is C6H12O6. The general formula for an alkene is CnH2n plus 2. But what I can't seem to find is any scientific formula for Bob. Bob? My goldfish. Are you ready for kids who eat healthy? Good nutrition can lead to great things. To find out how a healthy lifestyle can help your child succeed, go to mypyramid.gov. A public service announcement brought to you by the Ad Council and USDA. From the vantage point, Mafatu saw six war canoes drawn up on the beach. But what held the boy's eyes in awful trance were the figures, the eaters of men, cannibals. Mafatu watched the strange scene, powerless to move. In that very instant, he heard a crashing in the undergrowth. Four figures were tearing through the jungle. He turned and ran blindly down the trail, thinking only of its canoe. If only he could reach it before the savages overtook him. Explore new worlds. Find out what happens next by reading the book Call It Courage by Armstrong Sperry. For other great book ideas, visit literacy.gov. A message from the Library of Congress and the Ad Council. Welcome back to the Orange and Blue Sports Network. My name is Joseph Torviso, and I'll be giving you the scores around the WBIT tournament. Currently, Penn State trails to George Mason 66 to 62 with four minutes and 30 seconds left in the fourth quarter. With just 32 seconds left before halftime, Stony Brook leads James Madison 35 to 33. Currently in Illinois, it is halftime as Missouri State trails 37 to 32. Your Florida Gators are currently trailing 44 to 29 at home to St. John's. With a minute left in the second quarter, Cleveland State is beating Toledo 26 to 21. With under a minute until halftime, Villanova leads VCU 34 to 30. At the half, Virginia is currently beating High Point 43 to 29. St. Joseph's currently has the lead against Seton Hall 24 to 19. Florida's SEC rival Arkansas currently trails 17 to 5 in the first quarter against Tulsa. TCU currently leads North Texas at home 9 to 7 with 3 minutes and 51 seconds left in the first quarter. Last but not least, another SEC team, Mississippi State, is beating Georgia Tech 12-3 with 3 minutes and 30 seconds left in the first quarter. When we come back, we will have the halftime report, the halftime show, where we will talk about Florida Gator basketball in just two minutes. As a small boy was rescued from abuse today by a magic trick. Witnesses say a bully had the boy pinned down. Scott was hitting Jimmy pretty hard, and I said somebody should do something. Moments later, a street magician arrived on the scene. Police reports state he covered the bully with his coat. What happened next is still under investigation. The bully turned into a bunch of kittens. The victim left the scene unharmed. Boy, you never see that happen. That's because it doesn't. If you see abuse or neglect, learn what you can do from American Humane at BeHumane.org. I'm Sally, a volunteer at United Way. I'm asking people around the neighborhood what they think this place needs. Uh, excuse me, hi. What do you think this place needs? I'd like to see more parking. More playgrounds. Free movies. Ah, uh, that's easy, better restaurants. And you, uh, what do you think this place needs? 
This place? Oh, more ice cream trucks. Okay. <laughs> uh, how about you? Wi-Fi everywhere? I was thinking more money in the pockets of local families come tax time. Um, can I change my answer? I was just kidding about the ice cream. Oh, that's way better. Uh, now that you mention it. When it comes to getting better tax refunds into the hands of local families, what this place needs is you. To donate or volunteer, go to unitedway.org. Because great things happen when we live united. Brought to you by United Way and the Ad Council. These are the sounds of someone taking their eyes off the road. Texting while driving is more than distracting. It's dangerous. Do Florida a favor. When you're on the road, stay off the phone. A message from CTIA, America's Wireless Companies, and the National Safety Council. Welcome back to the Orange and Blue Sports Network, your official home for student-run radio play-by-play -play broadcasts and podcast coverage of the, of the Florida Gators. I'm Nate Bill Gray here alongside Alexis Vivanco, the main man who just gave you your score updates. Joseph Torviso will be joining us for this halftime show. Gentlemen, not the half you're expecting if you're a Florida Gator fan or within the realm of that fan base. 15-point lead from the New York native St. John's out of Queens. St. John's has really run the orange and blue off the court, to put it simply, thus far in this basketball game. It's interesting to watch this Florida women's team struggle so immensely against a West Coast-type, high-paced, fast-break offense when you compare that with the men's team, and that's exactly how they run their basketball sets. So interesting to see the contrast between how the two teams play, but yeah, it's really been all Layla Reynolds for the orange and blue, uh, not much other scoring outside of that. Joseph, what is your analysis on the first half? How do you think Florida can creep back into this game where they're already down 15? Well, I think, frankly, it's just taking more shots. I mean, this St. John's defense has done great in the first half, drowning this Florida offense. We saw earlier um, that Leilani Correa um, got a turnover. The St. John's defense forced Leilani Correa to do an unnecessary turnover where she received the ball in double coverage, forcing a walk. Um, she needs to just take more shots. She only has two points with just going one for one from the field. The Gators need to get other players involved. Rimdahl has zero points, 0 for 2 from the field. Zippy Broughton, zero points, 0 for 3 from the field. Now this St. John's team, immaculate defensive pressure, as I said in the first half. Will they be able to replicate it in the second half? I don't think so. I think they're going to go on the back pedal in a bit and uh, save their energy for their offensive strives. But the Gators, they need to respond and they need to go attack that basket and score some points. Absolutely. Now, Alexis, in your opinion, who has been the strong point for the Florida Gators, and what can the Florida Gators change specifically to creep back into this game? Far and away, I think, it's pretty obvious that the freshman Layla Reynolds, number 13, has been a killer here. The brightest spot, I feel like, that has been produced from this first half has been Layla Reynolds. Layla Reynolds has been explosive. That right hand was lethal, making it so that she has the most points on this team as a freshman in the first round of playoff basketball, mm. which is a weird thing to say. St. John's is no sleeping matter. You know, it's a team yeah. that you still have to take seriously, a lot more seriously than I think the Florida Gators were letting on to begin this match. But Layla Reynolds and Alia Mathar to a certain degree, but when your top scorer hasn't been, been, hasn't been your top scorer, it might be time to reassess some options. <laughs> now, Aliyah Mazzaro is an elite offensive weapon. We all have bad games. The question is, are we allowed to have bad games in the playoffs? That is the real question. Now, uh, when you have Aliyah Mazzaro and Leilani Correa both playing quietly offensively, then you look at how things are going for the Red Storm. How about Unique Drake? 18 points in the first half on her way to possibly a 40-point game if she can just score two more than she did in half number one. She's been 
really a baller. I mean, shooting very efficiently. She's eight. Uh, this is an interesting statistic, Joseph. She's eight for 13 on the night. All five misses come from beyond the arc. She's 0 for 3 from, or 0 for 5 from 3, excuse me, and 8 for 8 within that three-point arc from the two-point range. So Unique Drake really uh, getting to the basket efficiently and taking the shots that she wants to take in the paint. You know, it's interesting because, you know, St. John's as a whole hasn't really been great from three. They're shooting 14%, one for seven from three. But you know what St. John's is doing? They're getting looks inside the paint. They have 26 points inside the paint compared to Florida 16. They know that they're not gonna get points from beyond the arc and they're making it happen mm. inside the paint. But it's interesting, they have a very small rotation going on. Drake has played 17 minutes already today. Um, only six players have uh, gone on to the court for St. John's. It's gonna be interesting to see if they could uh, keep up with this high intensity uh, offensively and even defensively. Yeah, now it is worth noting outside of Faith Dute because Rache Kyle is still sidelined with that knee injury, this Gators uh, defense really is short staffed and short in terms of height as well. So size is not necessarily a worrisome factor for the Red Storm. They're playing to their strength, getting efficient shots, moving that basketball uh, very quickly and doing what they need to do. Now, one thing I've actually noticed here in this first half, uh, this Florida Gators women's basketball team is almost the antithesis of the men's team. I feel like it's polar opposites when it comes to their styles of play. The Florida Gators men's basketball team focuses on pushing the break early and often moving and running the fast break, just extending that lead through fast break points. You look at the Gators uh, women's basketball team tonight, as you can see, they look to run sets, and they're having real trouble getting those sets going, especially when it comes to passing the ball around the top of the key. St. John's has been very active with the hands, intercepting the ball, getting in the passing lanes, preventing Florida from ever actually being able to garner a set, get a set going, and work, and feel some sort of rhythm or flow in their offense. So, yeah, wonderful job from St. John's defensively and then offensively to turn that defense into offense so instantaneously. Yeah, um watching St. John's defensively. You know, I noticed head coach Joe Tartamella get really upset when uh, their, his players didn't read a specific play where a player got in behind the defender, got an easy point uh, inside the paint, scoring a nice layup. I think the St. John's team takes pride in reading the plays, reading what's gonna happen, getting into the correct spots, making sure that the Gators can't get anything going. And we've seen it, they're drowning Florida. So if they keep this up, quite frankly, I don't see the Florida Gators coming back. Yeah, Florida needs to change something in the second half. I'm not sure what said something is, but that is the buzzer. So we're gonna begin half number two here. Uh, St. John's leading 44 to 29 with 10 minutes to go here in quarter number three, half number two being that it hasn't started. The Gators are making their way onto the court, the Red Storm are making their way onto the court. It's gonna be Florida Gators basketball. Leilani Correa inbounding from the far side sideline. She finds Zippy Broughton, who's got it at the top of the key, working on Drake. Broughton to Dute on that near side elbow. Dute working in the post, gives it to Reynolds, peels around the elbow on the left side, kicks it out to Matharu, who's got it on that near side wing. Matharu pull up just in front of that three point arc from the near side wing. It's no good, bounces off the far side of the iron. Ladies and gentlemen, as much fun as I've had on the play-by-play -play duties. I will be passing things over to Alexis Vivanco, who's got you covered with the play-by-play -play of half number two. Alexis, take us away. Nate Bilgeray, the man, the myth, the legend himself. It's a pleasure to be here and Hold take on. over. I, I think that's Scott Sterling. Oh, shucks. <laughs> that's a little soccer reference for you, for those who don't know. As Unique Drake hands it off to Gideon. Gideon, her shot right off the back of the iron. In her place, Aliyah Mathar will bring up the ball. Circling around, looking for options. Finds Correa here on the right wing. Slowing the pace down for the Gators right now. Swings it back to Olya Matharo. Being worked on by Unique Drake. Unique Drake having a monster night thus far. As Faith due to top of the key, surveys her options. Finds Layla Reynolds. Clock ticks down with six seconds on the shot clock. Matharo running out of options. Stops, pulls up from the right wing. And it's just short. Ball will bounce out of bounds. And Red Storm will pick up where they left off. Yeah, not the look Florida wanted there. You could see Aliyah Matharu was 
upset after that shot went up. One, because of the air ball, but two, because that shot was not supposed to be the shot. The set just didn't work for Florida as it hasn't been all game. And Mayo being worked on over by Zippy Broad and there by the logo. Still a high scoring affair for the Red Storm, all things considered, as Unique Drake tries to find the screen instead. We'll swing it over to the corner. Mayo, Mayo working down the baseline. Finds Gideon. Gideon puts it up. And it's no good. Faith Dude off the hands. Picks it up. And Zippy Broaden's on her way. Broaden, like a bat out of hell, swings it down to Correa. And Correa will take a tumble. That'll be a foul on the Red Storm. And Florida may just be getting back into this thing. Yeah, that if, if the foul wasn't committed, it was a bucket or a foul. Leilani Correa had... Her sight set on the basket with nothing in front of her. And when that happens, it's very difficult uh, to stop this lady. Now, interestingly enough, the foul is going to be on the floor. So it's Gators inbound from that far side baseline. And Dew will hand it off to Matharu. Matharu for three from the left corner. It's good. Florida Gators may just have life in this thing as Mayo tries to work off this Gators press. Over to Drake. Drake slowing down the pace of this game over here. Broad and still not far behind. Hasn't moved past the logo. Back to Mayo, her turn to sit around and watch. Swings is still top of the arc. Archer looking for something to go, finds Mayo. Mayo swings it there to the top of the key, Unique Drake. That shot's good. Top of the key three for Unique Drake. And shucks, the score is looking the same as it was before. <laughs> still now. Gators have to turn with the ball. Red Storm nearly pick it up, but St. John's is unable to recover. Layla Reynolds fade away, and it's good. That mid-range has continued to be lethal for Layla Reynolds. 16 points on the night. That's her 14th of the night. She's 7 for 8 for 12 now from the arc shooting. Really an efficient game of basketball for the freshman who's getting it done in the orange and blue. 7.15 on this, shot, uh, on, this, on this clock, and the ref will call a foul, and the Gators will re regain possession. Yeah, it looked like that was actually Archer who was moving a little there as she tried to set a screen which yielded in that offensive foul resulting in Florida Gators basketball. And that Gators basketball will be handled by Alberta Rimdahl calling some plays and setting up her team as she gets the, she gets the, screen, the screen off Dute. Top of the key now is Correa, swings it over to the left wing. Now Dute working against Gideon. Gideon battle the bigs. Looking around, drives, steps back, that shot, no good. Recovered by Gideon. St. John's will bring the, court back, bring the ball back up the court. Being worked on by Rimdahl. Tight press here by the Gators. Try to put St. John's in their place. Mayo takes the screen by Archer. Still being worked on by Rimdahl. Looking for somewhere to go, goes to the top of the key. Swings it over to Drake. Drake being boxed like a fish as she drives. Steps back, nothing but air. Mayo try to recover that one for the Saint, uh, for the Red Storm. No dice. Leah Matharu did uh, get a hand there on Drake, so Drake is going to have an opportunity at two free throws here for St. John's, who's got a 13-point lead with 6.17 to go in quarter number three. That is Aliyah Matharu's third foul as she checks out of the game, so Florida's going to have to watch their offensive superstar and make sure they have her for the latter end of the fourth quarter. And fouls have continued to be a thorn in the Gators' side as Unique Drake will look to extend an already impressive performance in this first round of the WBIT. 21 points on the night as that first free throw is up and in. Make that 22. Still has been perfect so far, going three for three on, field, on free throws so far. Some cheers and jeers over mm -hmm. on the Gators' student section as the Gators look to sneak back into this thing. Over to, the, over to the right wing now. Lena Reynolds looking for somewhere to go with this ball. Has not found it yet, but still will swing it over the Saugas. Rimdahl drives, sp spins it over, excuse me, to Lena Reynolds. She'll drive, she'll take her turn. Swings it out to Saugas. Saugas, her shot just off, recovered by the Red Storm. Jillian Archer there with the rebound. As Sky Owen will take her place. Working around the WBIT logo on this near right side. Trying to slow the pace down. 540 in this third quarter. Red Storm lead 49 to 34. Tries to swing it over to the Red Storm. Jillian Archer is in the paint. Recovered by Reynolds with one hand. She'll stop, put her shot up. No good. Recovered again by Archer. 
miscues all night for the Florida Gators have been the name of the game. Yeah, it's really been unnecessary mistakes that have bit these Gators in the butt all night. And now St. John's will look to slow the pace down a little bit as Unique Drake comes barreling towards her. Rimdahl not far behind. Still not, has not found a lot of pressure so far, all things considered. As she'll look, she'll swing to the corner. Puts her shot up, that's Donald, and it's good. Good shot, good shot, best shot. <laughs> good shot, good shot, best shot. I like it, Donald gets it to go. A nasty triple there from the far side. And now Reynolds, not feeling a lot of pressure, but still will take her time with this one as she swings it to Dute right in the mid-range. Leilani Correa, her shot from the right wing, just off, recovered by Archer. A dominating force so far in the paint. Not the tallest, but has been the most effective thus far. As Sky will put her shot up, just off. Leilani Correa manages to wade off St. John's right hand. And now working towards the left corner. Top of the key now is Reynolds. Swings it over to, Ren uh, excuse me, to, Bird, to Rimdahl. And Faith Dew is looking for somewhere with this ball. Finds Correa down low. First shot's no good. It's nope. gonna be a foul on the floor there, Alexis. That was Archer committing the foul. She's having a good night offensively, but uh, she's been called for a couple of those uh, reach-in type fouls now. So Florida's gonna retain, retain possession as the foul was on the floor. They'll get an inbound opportunity after uh, this timeout. And after this timeout, we'll be back with some more Orange and Blue Sports Network tournament basketball. Don't go anywhere. Ruth Rusi, and this is how I live United. I read to children as part of United Way's education program. It helps them create links between language and literacy and prepares them for a better academic future. I figure I have the time and they have the need. My name is Ruth Rusi. I help kids prepare to succeed in school. So I don't just wear the shirt, I live it. Give, advocate, volunteer, live United. Go to liveunited.org. Brought to you by United Way and the Ad Council. Hey you, yeah you, sit right there, I gotta tell you something. I bet you know someone with type 2 diabetes. Guaranteed, you know why? Because one out of every three little kids is gonna develop diabetes in their lifetime. That is gonna lead to heart problems, strokes, and even blindness. I'm John Sally, and I'm telling you, it ain't gotta be that way. Now you can up your defenses by eating more fruits and vegetables, having more vegetarian and vegan meals. These steps can be the power plays to protect you and your family against the risk of diabetes. To learn more, go to blockdiabetes.org. Hello, I'm John Lithgow. Manatees are unique among the most amazing animals on Earth, but they're endangered. We pose the greatest threat to their survival. Many manatees are killed or injured by boats or other recreational activities. I'm a writer of children's books, including one about manatees, and I believe education is the key. You can be part of the solution. Please contact Save the Manatee Club right now. Call 1-800-432-JOIN. Thank you. At the American Lung Association, we're fighting for a day when we can all breathe easier. We're fighting for clear skies over every city and healthy lungs throughout the country. We're fighting to free millions of Americans from the addictive grip of tobacco and the devastating effects of lung disease. The American Lung Association isn't just fighting for air. We're fighting for all the things that make it worth breathing. And we can use your help. See what you can do at fightingforair.org. Welcome back, Gator Nation. Your score right now, 51-34. St. John leads in this third quarter, four, minute, four minutes, 11 seconds to go, and it has not looked bright for these Florida Gators in a crucial, crucial must-win game to advance to the second round of the WBIT. Well, still, Alexis, it's really all the freshmen. Uh, Layla Reynolds, she's put up 16 points tonight. Everyone else on the floor currently for Florida either has two or zero points. I mean, it's... You can't expect to win basketball games when you have one player consistently scoring the basketball, especially when that one player is not the person who's supposed to be scoring the basketball. Without Leilani Correa, without Aliyah Matharu, this offense is not what it should be. Florida's managed to clean up their foul troubles, but have lost their top scorer, Aliyah Matharu. Asalgas will inbound the ball. Florida Gators looking to get back in this one as Jariah Warren spins and gets it in. Takes St. John's to a trip on the spin cycle. Gideon didn't know how to handle it. Yeah, I think they were a little dizzy there after uh, looking at that spin. And Gira uh, excuse me, and Mayo will pick up the pace here for the Florida Gator or for the for St. John's. Gets a screen off Owen. Nothing comes of it. Jariah Warren 
He's thinking like white on rice. Unique Drake will swing it back to Mayo, top of the key. Mayo drives, puts it up, and the right hand is lethal. 53 to 36, three and a half minutes to go here in this third quarter. St. John still on top. That right hand is lethal indeed. I mean, that was no uh, small task there, finishing the layup on the taller woman. And Salga swings it over to Rimdahl. Two international students find Zippy Broad in here at the top of the keys. Drives left, still being worked on, puts it up. No good, directly off as Raya Warren will pick up the slack. Back to Correa. Top of the key now is Salgas. Salgas will put her shot up. One second left on the shot clock. Raya Warren, and it's no good. Recovered by St. John's. Unique Drake will take it back the other way. And a great rally attempt by the Gators. Nothing comes of it, though. Mm -hmm. As slowing the pace down is Sky Owen, taking a minute to assess her options. I don't understand why Florida doesn't pressure Owens right now. St. John's has been taking it slow, running their sets all night, and Florida's just allowing them to do so. And Gideon hands it off to Drake. Drake puts it up right off the glass. Leilani Correa will pick up the slack, and here we go. Like a bat out of hell. Drives. No one's there. Puts it up, and it's off. Mm. Recovered again by Gideon. Tried to put it up with the right on the left side, and that was her downfall there, Alexis. And Donald receiving the pressure of that double team as Mayo will look to slow things down. 15 seconds on the shot clock, but a little over two minutes to play in this third quarter. Gators still down, 53 to 36. As now, Donald calls for the screen, doesn't get it. Passes it over to Gideon. Gideon swings it over. Sky Owen, nobody there. Right off the, right off the iron, excuse me. And Zippy brought in, will zip it back the other way. Nobody there. Looking around, finds Correa. Correa puts it up, and it's right off. Back of the iron it goes into the hands of St. John. Unique Drake does it all, doesn't she? She's uh, an elite offensive presence and can rebound and play defense as well. Really just the by far and large best player and captain of the St. John's team. And St. John beginning to reap the fruit of their labor, slowing the pace down with a little under seven on the shot clock. Scoring drop for the Gators, but nothing of the sort for the Red Storm as Drake will put it up, gets tapped on the head by Warren and still managed to get the and one. She'll head to the line for one more shot. Yeah, Florida's fallen behind quickly. They're down 19 now with a minute 16 to go in quarter number three. Potentially will be down 20 after this free throw. It's very hard to dig yourself out of a 20-point hole with 10 minutes remaining in a basketball game. I understand there's a little over 10 minutes to go right now, but uh, Florida is burying themselves with more and more and more sand, and eventually that lead is just going to grow uh, to a point where it's unbreakable. We'll see if Florida can uh, change the momentum and the tides of things here with a minute 16 to go in quarter number three. Drake shot up, and it's good. 20-point deficit officially for the Gators as Elani Correa checks out, and Paige Clausen will step in her place as Faith Dute will step here in the top of the key. Clausen with her first time handling the ball tonight. Swings over to Rimdahl. Rimdahl will take it again. Look for somewhere to go. Found none of it. Instead, was greeted by Jayla Donald. Greeted, greeted by Jayla Donald, but um, not as Jayla Donald wanted to greet her. She went for the reach, uh, committed the foul. So it's going to be a retained possession for Florida on the inbound. And Kenza Salgas will bring it back in for the Gators, inbounding. Trying to find somewhere to go. Finds Dute. Dute working on that baseline. Floats it over to Rimdahl. Back where she started here, near the logo. Back to Dute. Slowing the pace down, commanding the floor as Salgas needs to find somewhere to go with this ball. Five seconds on the shot clock as Clausen swings it back to Reynolds. Reynolds running out of time. Tries to make the pass as Salgas and she'll get intercepted by Sky Owen. Drake drives, puts it up. No alarms and no surprises. Sky Owen manages to fight through the contact. Gets the score. Yeah, that was... Uh... Sky Owen on the assist, uh, finding Unique Drake for that bucket, actually. But uh, Unique Unique Drake did an incredible, incredible job of just sticking with it there and uh, finishing through contact as she's done so consistently in this game, Alexis. And Unique Drake, the poster child for the weight room, as that mm. shot is up and in and officially has 29 on the night. Nearly has a 30 bomb as Rimdahl will go back the other way, going right to left for the Gators. Scans her options, running out of time. 27 seconds left in this game, in this third quarter, excuse me. Finds Rimdahl, down low, gets it to go. 
Gators have a mountain to climb, and it starts here. As Saugus will work on Mayo. Tight coverage, 15 seconds left here in this third quarter. Red Storm will probably run out the clock if they can. As St. John's will look to take this last shot. Mayo working down that right side. Drives, nobody's there. Fancy moves, and there it goes. Ooh, nasty Euro step. Last shot of the third quarter taken by Mayo. Nobody's there to cover her. And the Gators officially find themselves worse than when they started. <laughs> 61 to 38. Heading into this fourth quarter. We'll see if the Gators can get themselves out of this one after a quick commercial break. You're listening to the Orange and Blue Sports Network. Hey, Russell Wilson here, and I know how important exercise is. It's essential. It's essential. With Play 60, United Way and the NFL are helping kids stay active and play at least 60 minutes a day. Healthy kids. Healthy kids. But what this place needs is you. To donate or volunteer, go to unitedway.org slash play60 because great things happen when we live united. Donate, donate. Are you guys going to do that every time? Yes, of course. Yes, of course. Brought to you by United Way and the Ad Council. There are some things you can only do once in a lifetime. Graduate high school, get your first job, and if you're a young man about to turn 18, there's one other thing, which is also the law. Registering with Selective Service. It's fast, it's easy, and you only have to do it once your entire life. Just visit your post office or sss.gov on your computer or smartphone. Do it and keep yourself eligible for a lot of other once-in-a-lifetime experiences, like that first college loan or Pell Grant, or U.S. citizenship if you're an immigrant. Hello, I'm John Lithgow. Manatees are unique, among the most amazing animals on Earth, but they're endangered. We pose the greatest threat to their survival. Many manatees are killed or injured by boats or other recreational activities. I'm a writer of children's books, including one about manatees, and I believe education is the key. You can be part of the solution. Please contact Save the Manatee Club right now. Call 1-800-432-JOIN. Thank you. Are you saving for a big purchase or just trying to put money away for a rainy day? The National Foundation for Credit Counseling offers these tips to help you meet your savings goals. Set aside money from every paycheck, bank any raises, bonuses, or tax refunds, and put away loose change every night. It adds up. For more tips on how to save money and reach your financial goals, call a certified NFCC counselor at 1-800-388-2227 or visit nfcc.org, a public service from the National Foundation for Credit Counseling. Gaining weight was easy. Losing it's a lot harder. I have to work at it every day. But with every step, I lower my risk for type 2 diabetes and heart disease. And that makes it Morning, Daddy. very much worth the effort. Learn how you can help stop diabetes by losing weight, eating healthy, and staying active. Visit CheckupAmerica.org or call 1-800-DIABETES. A message from the American Diabetes Association. Welcome back, Gator fans. If there ever was a time to rally, I think now would be a good time to start. Florida currently down 61-38 to against the St. John Red Storms here in this first round of the inaugural WBIT. Gators have found little sparks of life but that lifeline is quickly running out. St. John's doing what they can, and Unique Drake has been on the come up for the Gator, or excuse me, for the, for the Red Storm, taking yeah. almost a 30 bomb so far. Absolutely, I mean, worth noting, Unique Drake has 29 points, her career high is 36, and we've got 10 minutes to go with the way she's scoring, she might get there. And St. John's will inbound here to start, to, excuse me, to resume this fourth quarter. Sky Owen there at the top of the key. Mathara's checked back into the game. Got into some foul trouble earlier. As Drake will swing it over to the corner. Donald, she'll take her turn with the ball. Other end. Across the world didn't really work as Aaliyah Mathara will pick up the slack for the Gators. Another rebound. Nearly intercepted by the Red Storm. But Layla Reynolds will put it up and get the foul. There she is again, Alexis. The freshman Layla Reynolds is... Having the game of her life right now, uh, 16 points, uh, eight for 13 from the field, really efficient, only has shot one three so far today. She's living and breathing in the paint, using her physical abilities and her real uh, standout athleticism and body control to work in the post and control her pump fakes, control her shot attempts, and just cruise playing efficient basketball. Layla Reynolds misses her first free throw on the night. We'll go for number two and gets that one. 50% so far here for the freshman, as the Red Storm will pick up where they left off, being tightly covered by Alberta Rimdahl. Swings over to the corner, 
Unique Drake thinks about shooting it, doesn't dare to. Back to the top of the key we go. Here in this fourth quarter, 15 seconds on this shot clock. Unique Drake will swing it back the other way to the left side as Unique, excuse me, as Mayo. As Drake will work from the, from the corner over to Mayo and her three is good. Unique Mayo continues to put the burners here on these Florida Gators. 14 points on the night as Aliyah Mathar will put her shot up and manage to get the call. She'll have to line for two shots of her own. Yeah, St. John's is, uh, for lack of a better term, running away with this one, Alexis. It's just really not all that close at all. A 25-point lead for the Red Storm right now. And, I mean, regardless of whether Aliyah Matharu makes these two free throws or not, it's, you need to play perfect basketball as the orange and blue to come back in this game. No more turnovers, no more fouls, no more mistakes. You got nine minutes, 25 point deficit uh, for another breath of life in the second round of the WBIT. Let's see if they can uh, tighten things up here in the final nine minutes. A 23 point mountain is all that stands between the Florida Gators and reaching to the second round of this WBIT. St. John's though enjoying the nice cushion, a nice cushioning lead if you will to seek to secure their place. Working by the logo, swings over to the corner. Unique Drake puts it, from, puts it up from the right corner, and you know it. Aliyah Matharu will take the ball back herself. Going coast to coast with it, tries to put the moves, puts it up. Donald wasn't ready for it, but Faith Dude with a second chance points, and they convert. Florida Gators down 60, uh, 67 to 43, 819 in this fourth quarter. I wish I could have seen a little more of that this game from Faith Dude. I feel like being the tallest woman on the court by a good four inches, she really has done a poor job of instituting her size in the paint uh, to block shots, alter shots, and secure rebounds. And Donald here by the logo will look to call a play. Takes it over on the left side. Down low is Gideon. Back to Donald. Donald with some contact. Doesn't matter. Gets the tough layup. And the St. John's Red Storm are on their way. Aliyah Mathar will stop near the right wing. Swings it to Reynolds. Reynolds will look for her options. Finds Dute. Back to Reynolds. Pulls up. Shot's no good. Recovered by the Red Storm. Nearly out of bounds. But Sky Owen will take it back the other way. 7.33 in this ball game. 69 to 43 is your score. St. John continues to lead. May will take a breather as Aliyah Mathar will come over on this left side to press. It just doesn't make sense, Alexis. Florida is giving St. John's real-time breathers on the court. There's no defensive pressure. And on the left wing is Drake, and Drake sinks it from the left wing. That's a fresh three-pointer as Reynolds will cherry-pick the other way, swings it to the corner. Rimdahl, her shot just off, recovered by Gideon. Gideon will find Drake, excuse me, will find Owen. And Owen and Gideon have been forces in the paint so far as Mayo will do her signature move and slow the game down for the Red Storm. Not a lot of time left to sort of figure out your mistakes as Jariah Warren will take her turn, no hands needed. Tightly pressing. Manages to shake off one defender. Owen swings it to Mayo, Mayo her shot. Just off, recovered by Faith Dute. And a foul be called. Not against the Gators though. As Zippy Broad and, Le and Leilani Correa will check in for the Gators side of things. 632 is your time, Seven, or excuse me, 72 to 43 is your score. Gators still down by 19. Alexis, did you notice there how Faith Dute quite literally cleared out the paint with her wingspan and size compared to the other girls and just got that rebound instantaneously? She's only got five on the night. And Leah Matharu fouled as she goes for that drive. She'll go to the line for two more shots of her own. Looking to erase a 19 point deficit. Excuse me, I do not know how to do math. A 29 <laughs> point deficit. Well, that's why you're on the, the broadcast and not on the uh, engineering team, no? Yeah, I know. I mean, I walked into my first accounting class and I said, no, thank you. <laughs> that first shot by Ali Matharu here in this segue is good. Union Drake, worth noting, uh, although she's not a Gator, she's the standout in the O-Dome tonight. She's got 35 on 13 for 19 from the floor. One point from tying her career high, two points from eclipsing it. We'll see if she gets there here in the first round of the Women's Basketball Invitational Tournament. There's a reason why Unique Drake has been named first team Big East. 
Fantastic performance as Donald will bounce pass it over to Drake. Drake will look back to Mayo. And Mayo will bring it to the top of the key. Looking to slow this game down. A little over six minutes to play here in this fourth quarter as Donald will sing it, swing it right back to Mayo. And Drake has nowhere to go. Playing a little bit of hacky sack here. Monkey in the middle, if you will. As Mayo will look to swing somebody off. Step back. No good. And that ball will be out on, it will be out on, on the Red Storm. Excuse me. Delani Correa to inbound for Florida. Nearly a close call. Looked as if she got a hand on it. Refs say no. Aliyah Matharu back towards the right wing. Drives. Being faced with all sorts of pressure. Doesn't manage it, manages to get it to bounce off. Foul is called. Yeah, that was a, a foul on Gideon. She just, uh, or excuse me, that was a foul on Faith Dute. She just got a little too physical in the paint there. And uh, it gave that ball to St. John's. And life here seems to be drained out of this Gator Nation. As five minutes and 30 seconds to go in this fourth quarter, 72 to 45 is your score. Mayo continues to be worked, continues to be worked on by Matharu. Swings at the top of the key. Intercepted by Correa. A little tip drill for you, if you will. And Leah Matharu will find Zippy Broad and puts her shot up from the left and it gets it to go. Made a range of nothing but net for Zippy Broaden. And the race to get back on top continues. Zippy Broughton finally gets on the board with two, her first points of the game, but just, which speaks to the volumes of lack of diversity that this Florida offense has had. Unique Drake, uh, unique Drake swings it over to Gideon. Gideon bounces that one off the back of the iron, trying to find the sweet spot there. May have just found the hard spot. Matharu, her shot, just off a card by Duke, using that wingspan, you know it. Second chance points convert for the 6-4 center. And the Gators continue to inch back into this thing. The time is running out. Fourth minutes and 30 seconds to go. And this press continues from Zippy Broaden. A timeout is called on the floor. And we'll be back after a quick commercial break. Don't go anywhere here in this fourth quarter. You're listening to the Orange and Blue Sports Network. Welcome back to Science Today. And we already have our next caller. Welcome. Who's this? Hi, I'm Philip. Hello, Philip. You sound really young. <laughs> Not really. I'm nine. Oh, wow. You're still in elementary school, right? Does that matter? Oh, no. Not at all. What's your question? Well, I know the molecular formula for water is H2O. I also know that hydrocarbon is CH3CH2 50 CH3. Glucose is C6H12O6. The general formula for an alkene is CnH2n plus 2. But what I can't seem to find is any scientific formula for Bob. Bob? My goldfish. Are you ready for kids who eat healthy? Good nutrition can lead to great things. To find out how a healthy lifestyle can help your child succeed, go to mypyramid.gov. A public service announcement brought to you by the Ad Council and USDA. At the American Lung Association, we're fighting for a day when we can all breathe easier. We're fighting for clear skies over every city and healthy lungs throughout the country. We're fighting to free millions of Americans from the addictive grip of tobacco and the devastating effects of lung disease. The American Lung Association isn't just fighting for air. We're fighting for all the things that make it worth breathing, and we can use your help. See what you can do at fightingforair.org. From the vantage point, Mafatu saw six war canoes drawn up on the beach. But what held the boys' eyes in awful trance were the figures, the eaters of men, cannibals. Mafatu watched the strange scene, powerless to move. In that very instant, he heard a crashing in the undergrowth. Four figures were tearing through the jungle. He turned and ran blindly down the trail, thinking only of its canoe. If only he could reach it before the savages overtook him. Explore new worlds. Find out what happens next by reading the book Call It Courage by Armstrong Sperry. For other great book ideas, visit literacy.gov. A message from the Library of Congress and the Ad Council. It's officially crunch time here in the O-Dome in the first round of this WBIT. Florida Gators down 49-72. 29 point, excuse me. A deficit that many believe that Gators might not come back from. Nate, it's been a tale, it's been a, it's been a tale of many things, but namely inefficiency. Yes. It's uh, a deficit of 23 for the Florida Gators. Uh, 
uh, for my uh, accounting major, Alexis Vivanco. Uh, numbers are difficult. I, I, I understand that. It's a horrible thing. Now, it has been inefficiency, but it's also been a lack of game planning. I feel like Kelly Ray Finley did not bring her team into this game as prepared as she should have, Alexis. I mean, you look at St. John's, it's pretty cut and dry. They've got Jillian Archer as their number two, and then Unique Drake is the number one offense. Both of them have been scoring at will. Really not much uh, prevention from the Florida Gators on defense in that aspect of things. And checking into the game right now for the Gators is this Echo being, trying to work on Drake. Drake spins her off, loses the ball in the process, still will go as a foul. Faith Dude brings the, hand, brings the hand out, but that wingspan is a little too much. Yeah, does that go looks, uh, she looked like a deer in the headlights uh, out there guarding, guarding uh, Drake. Drake is an elite basketball player. Drake is WNBA type talent and Alexa DeZecco attempted to do what she could, but that first step of unique Drake is really just unique amongst all first steps. She's an incredible athlete. She's a very twitchy athlete, which helps her be such an efficient scorer when it comes to getting to the rim. All things considered, Unique Drake a point away from breaking her career high, which in the first round of the WBIT is not a bad score sheet if you think about it. Absolutely not. She'll be heading to the free throw line too, so we'll see if she can uh, tie that career high and break it right now. I mean, she's been real efficient from the free throw line tonight, hasn't missed yet. She's six for six, so I mean, not much pressure on her with a 23-point lead. We'll see if she extends that 6-6 six to six to 8 for 8 and breaks that career high. Well, Nate, a few little nuggets of hope if you still want to believe, if you want to believe in a miracle here in the last 4 minutes and 14 seconds of this outing. Florida has gone on a 6-0 run over the last two, 2 minutes and 12 seconds, give or take some change. St. John's, though, has faced a scoring drought over the last 3 minutes. Now, naturally, some context is needed to sort of pull, put those pieces together. 72 to 49 may explain why they're willing to take the gas off the or take some some take some foot off the gas, so to speak. Yeah. However, is it possible? Can we see a miracle here in the Odom in the first round of this tournament? No, honestly, I don't think it's possible. To be quite frank with you, no disrespect to these Gators. They've fought their hearts out all season. They're a very talented group of women. Leilani Correa is a high-level athlete. She is an elite, elite mover. She has incredible body control, and she can get to a point on the court in a very few amount of steps. Aliyah Matharu, great shooter, great ball handler, great ball distributor. Uh, Layla Reynolds, uh, elite freshman uh, for this Florida Gators team. So it's not a discredit to them. You just look at the deficit, 23 points, only four minutes and 14 seconds remain here in quarter number three, or quarter number four, excuse me. And St. John's, St. John's really has all the momentum. I, I liked what you said about St. John's taking their foot off the gas in Florida, applying a little bit of that pressure. We haven't really seen any pressure from Florida for the entirety of the game. They've been sitting back on defense, letting St. John's work their sets. Now you see St. John's is struggling to score when Florida forces the action defensively, doesn't sit back and prevents them from getting comfortable and running those sets. I'm wondering why they didn't try that adjustment sooner when that lead was garnering and growing throughout the second and third quarter. It would be a hard, heartbreaking way for some of these Gators seniors to go out on a night like tonight as Unique Drake will put this first shot up. And it's good. She ties her career high with 36 points on the night. 73 to 49 in this fourth quarter. Four minutes and 14 seconds is your time. That second shot up and in. And there we go. We see a new career high for Unique Drake. And Zippy Broaden will zip it over the other side. Drives on this right side. Nobody there to contest her. Aliyah Matharu with the three. Her shot. And it's good from the right wing. Aliyah Matharu continues to show why she's a top five SEC scorer. Zippy brought in his Zippy. She's twitchy and she's got the diming ability to get the ball to her teammates in situations like she did where, where she found the open woman in Aliyah Matharu. And right there, Mayo showing off the golden eye of her own. Finds Archer down in the paint. Gets it to go. Zippy brought in there. We'll take it back the other way. Finding somewhere to go with this ball, if any. Faye Duke swings it over to, Ma to Matharu at the top of the key. She'll take it in herself. Being worked on still by, by Archer. Puts her shot up, blocked in the paint, but a foul is called. 
And Matharu may get a chance to go to the free throw line for two shots. Absolutely she will. That was Archer committing the foul. You could sh see she kept her hands in the air for an extended period of time post foul call to try to declare that her hand never touched Aliyah Matharu. But the refs, the officials did not agree. Uh, from my vantage point, I saw her clip Aliyah Matharu a little bit. Could have gone either way. The refs decided to give it to the team that's down uh, 24 points, which understandably so. And Archer's all smiles as she skips her way back onto the bench. Clapping up her teammates as she goes down. Aliyah Matharu, her second free throw, good to go. Manages to capsize this. Deficit to 22 points. Little by little, brick by brick. Leilani Correa talking it over with Kelly Ray Finley. As Sky Owens will speed her way to the basket. Being swarmed by Gators defenders. Reynolds looking to cover Mayo over by the, by the WBIT logo. Mayo looking to run this clock out as well as she, as she can. Nine seconds on the shot clock. A little over three minutes to go in this fourth quarter. And Mayo swinging. Takes the zip and gets the zap. Mayo manages to bring that contact all the way to the rim and she'll head to the line to make it a three-point play. Man, you could see Joe Tartamella pumped up on the sideline for his uh, St. John's, especially for Mayo. He put his hand in a fist, pumped his hand in the air and said, let's go. You got to be uh, electrified, excited and so passionate about what you can do in this tournament. If you're St. John's, I mean, St. John's came into this game as the underdog and they have absolutely run the Gators off the court. And Faith do, excuse me, initiating the scramble drill for the Florida Gators. Time to go. Aliyah Matharu, top of the key. Looking for that three ball, trying to capsize something. She'll drive, put it up. Shots just off, recovered yeah. by Gideon. Over to Drake. Drake will look to run this thing out. Being swarmed by Gator defenders and gets the foul. It appears the Gators have found that sort of method. Another timeout is called here in this fourth quarter. Two minutes and 36 is your time. St. John leads 78 to 54, and things are bleak here in the Exact Tech Arena. We'll come back after a quick commercial break. You're listening to the Orange and Blue Sports Network. Gaining weight was easy. Losing it's a lot harder. I have to work at it every day. But with every step, I lower my risk for type 2 diabetes and heart disease. And that makes it Morning, Daddy. very much worth the effort. Learn how you can help stop diabetes by losing weight, eating healthy, and staying active. Visit CheckupAmerica.org or call 1-800-DIABETES. A message from the American Diabetes Association. And we are back here for what could be the last 2 minutes and 36 seconds of the Gators season. Florida currently down 78 to 54. 24 point deficit. And things are bleak here in the O-Dome as Donald will inbound the ball for St. John's. Top of the key right now is Unique Drake doing a little victory dance, if you can call it that. Crossing in and out of her legs as Dezeko tries to hang on for dear life. Gets called a screen and over is Donald to the corner. Looking for somewhere to go is Sky Owens. Owens finds Mayo, Mayo puts it up. Shots this off. And a foul is called. Florida yeah. will inbound the ball and Layla Reynolds We'll pick, up, we'll pick up where the Gators left off. Yeah, that was Gideon on the foul there, number 21 for the Red Storm. And Liam Matharu's shot just up and off from that left wing. Dezeko tries to go for the foul, or tries to go for that ball, which was on its way out. Doesn't manage to get it. St. John's to inbound. A little over two minutes to go here, two minutes and five seconds to be exact, 78 to 54. Time has not changed since our last callback. But inbounding right now, is Donald, Donald floats it over to Archer. Archer swings it right back. Trying to run this clock out as best they can and this may just be the last time we see the orange and blue this season. As Sky Owen works to that left side, puts it up with the left hand, swims right out. Warren will pick up the slack there. Aliyah Mathar drives, looking for somewhere to go, takes it herself and gets the foul. Aliyah Mathar will head to the line for yet another chance at some easy, easy points. Yeah, Liam Matharu having a solid nine night on the, from the line as she typically does, shooting six for six from the charity stripe. She's got a chance to go eight for eight here. Um, you can almost sense the defeat 
that uh, is the aura surrounding the Gators right now. Not to say that they have uh, laxed when it comes to intensity. It's really the looks on their faces. You look at um, you look at the seniors out there. You look at Aliyah Matharu, and I mean she's pushing the pace, but she's not doing so with a smile. As uh, this is a rough way to go out. I mean, a minute 46, a 22 point deficit. The Gators would need a miracle amongst miracles to climb back into this game. In the meantime, a cloud looms over the exact tech arena. A red storm is passing through and may just end the Gators season as we see fit. 78 to 56 with a minute 39 left to go in this fourth quarter as Mayo will look to end this thing the way she started. Tries to draw some contact from Zippy Broaden. Gets the foul in the process. St. John's will look to do it all over again. And entering the game right now is number 22, Nevaeh Wingate, the six foot freshman forward from Liverpool, New York. Only appeared in nine games this season, looking to get some garbage time minutes to sort of end off the season. As Owen will end this thing with Leah Mathoru right off her back. Trying to shake her off, a little shake and bake. Finds her near the right wing, drives toward the left side, swings it over to the top of the key. There's Drake, five seconds on the shot clock. Four, three, looks for the open shot. Owen has it. Doesn't get it to go. Faith Dewear with the vertical. Leilani Correa will sprint, try to get it to go, puts it up. Her shot's good. 58 points for the Gators so far. Cuts the lead down to 20. A little over a minute to go. And you see some bench players heading in to say goodbye to this Gators starting lineup. An unfortunate end to what could have been a redemption season here for the Gators, missing the NCAA tournament by just a smidge. Entering into this first round of the WBIT against a weaker St. John's team. St. John's has put the world on notice here tonight in the O-Dome. As a substitution is called and yet another bench player is entering the fray. This time number two, Julia Bahati, the 6'2 freshman as well from Kenya. Has only, has, has, has only gotten one rebound this season. We did not expect her to see the floor tonight. And Sky Owen with 15 seconds left on this shot clock and 50 seconds remaining overall will look to end this game on a high note for the Red Storm. Always really sad sights and sounds when you see people playing their potential last game of basketball. I just watched head coach for the Florida Gators, Kelly Ray Finley, embrace senior Zippy Broughton our graduate student at this point, and you could just see the emotion on both of their faces. I mean, in basketball, there is competition. There's a winner and there's a loser, but uh, there's just so much that goes into this sport off the court. When you do lose your potential final game as a Florida Gator, it's, it's heartbreaking. On the charity stripe right now is number three, the freshman Tyona Bailey, a guard out of Newark, New Jersey, like the Sopranos, getting her first point of the night. Only has averaged 0.3 points per game, but the next generation of Red Storm is here. As Paige Clausen will hand it off to Reynolds. Reynolds to the top of, key, top of the key is Salgas. Salgas will end, look to end this thing on a high note as Rimdahl works her way around, swings it over to Reynolds. Her shot, no good. Front, off the front iron, Salgas will recover for the Gators. Swings it to Rimdahl. Her shot, just off as well. Dezeko tries to put it off, swatted by Bahati. Bahati. Gets her first block of the night. The 6'2 freshman from Niobe, Kenya. Officially getting her first taste of action here in postseason play. As Salgas will look to call up for anyone at this point. Finds his echo here on this baseline. Working near the left wing. Does not find anything yet. Slips through. Gets it to go. First points of the night for Dezeko. Come with a second left from the shot clock. And that's the ball game. Your Florida Gators will be heading home in this first round of the WBIT. Final score, 79 to 60. And St. John's will be moving on to the second round. A heartbreak here in the O-Dome. We'll be right back after a quick commercial break, but when we get back, we'll have a post-game performance with Nate Bilgeray, my color man, and our lovely man in the chair, our producer, Jose Torviso. Don't go away, you're listening to the Orange and Blue Sports Network. Go to school with your children. We say the Pledge of Allegiance together. I'm one out of every four children in America, and I'm struggling with hunger. I'm lucky to grow up where I could be whatever I want. 
I want to grow up and be someone who doesn't go to bed hungry. Please visit feedingamerica.org today and find your local food bank. Every dollar you donate helps provide seven meals for kids like me. Together, we're Feeding America. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. In the news, a small boy was rescued from abuse today by a magic trick. Witnesses say a bully had the boy pinned down. Scott was hitting Jimmy pretty hard, and I said somebody should do something. Moments later, a street magician arrived on the scene. Police reports state he covered the bully with his coat. What happened next is still under investigation. The bully turned into a bunch of kittens. The victim left the scene unharmed. Boy, you never see that happen. That's because it doesn't. If you see abuse or neglect, learn what you can do from American Humane at BeHumane.org. I'm Sally, a volunteer at United Way. I'm asking people around the neighborhood what they think this place needs. Uh, excuse me, hi. What do you think this place needs? I'd like to see more parking. More playgrounds. Free movies. Ah, uh, that's easy. Better restaurants. And you, uh, what do you think this place needs? This place? Oh, more ice cream trucks. Okay. <laughs> uh, how about you? Wi-Fi everywhere? I was thinking more money in the pockets of local families come tax time. Um, can I change my answer? I was just kidding about the ice cream. Oh, that's way better. Uh, now that you mention it. When it comes to getting better tax refunds into the hands of local families, what this place needs is you. To donate or volunteer, go to unitedway.org. Because great things happen when we live united. Brought to you by United Way and the Ad Council. This is the sound of someone correctly installing a car seat. And this is the sound of someone incorrectly installing a car seat. Correctly? Incorrectly. Hear the difference? No? That's because installing a car seat incorrectly is terribly easy. So much so, 75% of adults install them wrong. For simple instructions on how to get it right, visit buckleupforlife.org. Ah, perfectly executed. Brought to you by Cincinnati Children's Hospital Medical Center. My name is Ruth Rusi, and this is how I live United. I read to children as part of United Way's education program. It helps them create links between language and literacy and prepares them for a better academic future. I figure I have the time and they have the need. My name is Ruth Rusi. I help kids prepare to succeed in school. So I don't just wear the shirt, I live it. Give, advocate, volunteer, live united. Go to liveunited.org. Brought to you by United Way and the Ad Council. Hey, Russell Wilson here, and I know how important exercise is. It's essential. It's essential. With Play 60, United Way and the NFL are helping kids stay active and play at least 60 minutes a day. Healthy kids. Healthy kids. But what this place needs is you. To donate or volunteer, go to unitedway.org slash play60, because great things happen when we live united. Donate, donate. Are you guys going to do that every time? Yes, of course. Brought to you by United Way and the Ad Council. Are you saving for a big purchase or just trying to put money away for a rainy day? The National Foundation for Credit Counseling offers these tips to help you meet your savings goals. Set aside money from every paycheck, bank any raises, bonuses or tax refunds, and put away loose change every night. It adds up. For more tips on how to save money and reach your financial goals, call a certified NFCC counselor at 1-800-388-2227 or visit nfcc.org, a public service from the National Foundation for Credit Counseling. Welcome back here to the ending of this game. Fourth quarter was a bit of a disaster, a heartbreaking way to end off what could have been a redemption season for the Florida Gators. As always, I'm Alexis Vivanco alongside my main men, Nate Bilgeray and Joseph Dodviso. And gentlemen, with a heavy heart, it is fair to say that the Florida Gator season is officially over. You know, it stinks because coming out of that SEC tournament performance, you know, I thought the Gators had a really good chance to go deep into this tournament. But today, it goes down to two things. Poor defensive tactics and just terrible offensive production, Nate. Mm -hmm. I mean... You look at the Gators and where their offensive production came from. You got 40 points from Aliyah Matharu and Layla Reynolds combined. That's four-sixths of the points that this team scored tonight. I mean, I understand you always have your one and your two, but when a team as an entirety, as a totality, is not 
playing offense to its fullest capabilities, when someone as talented as Leilani Correa is so uninvolved and removed from the game, when someone like Faith Dute, who obviously has a, a, a height advantage out on the court over anyone on the St. John's Reb Storm, is so removed from the rebounding aspect of the game, it's hard to win when you're not playing to your strengths. I really felt like Florida allowed St. John's to control and dictate the pace of that game. When St. John's was running their offense in the full court, they brought the ball over the half court, set up their sets, and Florida just gave them time to sit around and about the half court marker and let their sets develop, let them work. When St. John's wanted to push the pace, they ran the break. Florida didn't do any of that. They just continuously tried to seek and search after their sets, which really weren't working. And You saw minimal in-game adjustment from Kelly Ray Finley and the Gators. And gentlemen, to be extremely frank here, the Florida Gators were bled out from the minute they stepped foot on this court. Unfortunately, a lot of players will be not returning for this next season. Florida had a huge senior class within the starting lineup. You have people like Faith Du, Leilani Correa, Aliyah Matharu, Zippy Broaden, players that have been an integral part of this season so far. And we see Faith Du over on the left side of the court taking in what could be the last, mom the mo the last moments of her collegiate career. Her future still undetermined. However, there are some upsides here. Obviously, we can't address the, room, the elephant in the room anymore. St. John's took this one on, and they'll be, they'll be heading on to the second round. Where does Florida go from here? That's a really tough question to answer because you're losing so many seniors, like you just said. First things first, I want to give a congratulations on wonderful careers to Aliyah Matharu, Zippy Broughton, Kenza Salgas, Leilani Correa, Faith Dute, and the injured but ever impactful Rashea Kyle. A lot of seniors ugh, leaving this team. So what's next for Kelly Gray Finley and the Gators? I think the answer is simple. That answer is recruiting. You gotta bring in a talented group of basketball players to replace people uh, like Aliyah Matharu, who's just such a dynamic scorer, Leilani Correa, an incredibly, incredibly athletic human who can score the basketball with ease. You're losing your best athletes, and you need to find a way to replace them. Speaking well, of recruiting, I mean, they're bringing in one of, you know, the daughter of one of the best athletes in the NBA, Miara O'Neal. I mean, there's a great name to bring into your program. Not only are you bringing in a great player, but you're also bringing in a lot of eyes Absolutely. into the program, which will then possibly help them in the transfer portal. That's true. Trying to get more... Uh, bodies into the team that could potentially make a difference like we saw with uh, in addition to the team like Leilani Correa and even Al Aliyah Matharu. Mariah O'Neill ranked the 33rd ranked the 33rd best recruit in the country for the class of 2024 ranked in the ESPN top 100 for women excuse me she stands six foot four and currently lives in Houston she was ranked the third best prospect in the state of Texas in 2024 and fifth in the nation from her position getting a center who is viable. Faith Dude has had contributions to this team. They'll forever be, be uh, forever be re recognized and be and to have be, 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 be grateful for. Excuse me, mm -hmm. sorry for the word vomit there. <laughs> but getting a player with the caliber of Mariah ne or Mariah O'Neal is a great first step for Kelly Ray Finley to not only get back to her winning ways, perhaps make a push next season for the tournament if she does so see if she does so see fit. Yeah, I mean. It's lovely that you're bringing in O'Neal because, I mean, like you said, Joseph, uh, Shaquille O'Neal might have more money in his bank account than Florida Victorious has to expend on all NIL possibilities for the Florida Gators. So, yeah, maybe you do bring in some eyes. Maybe you do bring in some donations, some extra NIL, some uh, cool transfers. I mean, you look at how Todd Golden revitalized the men's team yep. specifically through the transfers portal. Micah Hanlockton, who... Uh, hopefully is doing well after that horrible leg injury in the SEC tournament final. You got Tyree Samuel transferred from Seton Hall. Uh, Walter Clayton transferred from Iona. Zion Poland transferred from UC Riverside. So it's uh, when you obviously are lacking in talent, you need to bring in talent. And that is the next step for Kelly Ray Finley because, of course, a viable center is, I mean, so instrumental for a team to be successful, but 
it's never one player, especially in the sport of basketball. You look at LeBron James. He had Ray Allen when he needed him most. I mean, you look at Kevin Durant. He had Steph Curry when he needed him. It's never one. You need two. You need three. You need a group of players that can consistently offensively play basketball and Florida does not have that right now and they will definitely not have that next season when they lose all their seniors barring any replacements they make. In terms of playing as a team you know that's what Kelly Ray Finley does the best. She brings the best out of her girls and she makes them play as one but uh, you know it's got to be said next season it's it's going to be a big season for her um, you know disappointing back-to-back -back seasons and you know just the way that they were just dominated today you know 19 point game the game um you know as the score ends but you know it it was just it was it wasn't really good well gentlemen to recap everything a bitter bitter end to what could have been a great season didn't end up so well florida ends the season at 16 and 16 finley or excuse me kelly ray finley must now replace a roster that four of the top seven leading scorers in the SEC, including SEC Six Woman of the Year, Leilani Correa. However, there is some bright spots here and there, picking up some great, great prospects here to head onto the court. Of course, Mariah O'Neal, daughter of Shaquille O'Neal, and Olivia McGill, the 16th ranked recruit out of Coon Rapids, Minnesota. Looking ahead towards the men's side of things, they'll face off against Colorado in the first round of the NCAA tournament on Friday in Indianapolis. A bright spot here for the Gators during a dark day. From all of us here at the Orange and Blue Sports Network, I'm Alexis Vivanco, joined alongside the talented, electrifying Nate Bilgeray and the reliable, dependent stone of our foundation, Joseph Torviso. We wish you all a great night. Tuning into the Orange and Blue Sports Network's coverage. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at OBSN Gators. That's OBSN Gators. Until next time, go Gators!